Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about DynamoDB. Whether you're building a mobile app or a web app, DynamoDB can be a very cost-efficient backend for your data needs. Nevertheless, the way you access and manipulate data might be different than what you're used to. So I will go through the basic operations and show you how it can be done. I will be using Node.js in Lambda on AWS. The functions are intended to be connected to an API in the API gateway. DynamoDB structures its data in key value pairs. So each table has a lot of key value pairs, basically primary key and content. The content can be fairly large, typically modeled in JSON. Important to note here, the primary key must be unique. So for each field in the primary key, you can look up exactly one content. In my simple example, the primary key will be just a string and the content will be a JSON structure. An individual item consists of a primary key and the payload, the content, which can be pretty much anything, can be even large and a couple megabyte large. So in this example, the primary key will be a string that represents a user ID and the content in this case is just last name, first name. Of course, that can grow over time and can be modified. The basic operations I will go through with a couple of examples are create an item, retrieve an item, and delete an item. When you already have an item, you can make modifications to that item. You can add an attribute, delete that attribute, or modify it. If the attribute is a list, you can add an object to that list, remove one, or modify an object to that list. The structure of executing a command is always preparing the parameters that describe the command, executing the command, and then process your result. So for example, preparing the parameters here, table name, condition expression, a couple of similar parameters depending on the command to be executed, and then using the document client, in this case for get items with these parameters, and after that processing the results. Let's go through a couple of examples. The first one is put item. It will create a new item in the database. So what we hand in is a primary key and an object. The function in Node.js looks something like that. We prepare parameters, specify the table, and we specify the item which consists of the user ID, which is a primary key, and the item which we put in the field content, just like you see at the bottom right. Then we execute the command put and wait for it to finish. Next is get item. So in this case, we just hand over a primary key and we get the result with the object and the primary key. Alternatively, the item does not exist and we get nothing back. So in this case, we just specify the table and the primary key and execute the get command and wait for it to return a result. Now the problem with a standard put is it might overwrite an item that already exists and we might want that or we might not want that. In case we don't, we can specify a condition. So attribute not exists if, and, and we specify the primary key here. If the item with that primary key exists, then it will not execute. So with this additional condition, the command will not overwrite an existing item, but it will create the item if it does not exist already. Apart from that, this command is the same as the previous put item. Delete item, very straightforward. We specify the table and the primary key and execute the delete command. I have created a demo table and as you see, it is empty. Here you see the get function that we specified also previously in the slide. I have a test event configured that just hands over user ID one. When I run this test event with a user ID one, I get an empty result because the table is empty. Here is the put function. The test event has a user ID one and specifies a new item. So I have executed this test event and go back to the get function. I rerun the test function and get the item I just created. 
Here I have the conditional put function. It will not overwrite an existing item. I have specified a different name with the same user ID and run this one. And I get a conditional check failed exception in return. Back to the get function. I see the original item has not been overwritten. Here's a delete function. I've specified user ID one as a test event. And I have deleted the database. When I run the get function, I get nothing in return. Back to the conditional put. Now that the database is empty, it should write that item. I do not get an exception. Back to the get function. I get the different name with this item now. Another basic operation is adding an attribute to an existing item. So for that, we use the update function and we have an update expression where we set the attribute with a value. Then we specify the attribute names and the attribute values. In this case, because I want the age not on top level next to the content, but as part of the content, I have content and age and set the age inside the content and I specify the value in expression attribute values. Now setting an attribute in an item that does not exist will throw an exception. Modifying an attribute in an item that already exists is actually the same as setting is new. So the same set function update, it does not care whether the attribute exists already. To remove an existing attribute, also update, but instead of set, you remove and you do not need to specify the value, of course. So to execute these, this is how our table right now looks like. We have the user in the table, user number one. I have a function specified to update the attribute, content age, and I get the value from the test. So I have configured a test event for user ID one, age is an integer 55. When I run this, I don't get an error message. And this is how the item looks like now in the database. Now to update this, I use a different test case with the same function. And that's how the item looks like now. And with this function, I can remove the attribute from my item. The test event only specifies the user ID. And when I execute it, the item looks like this with the attribute removed. So to add an item into a list, you also use the update function and you use the function in the update expression list append. So you specify the location of your list and you add the item that you want to add to it. Now important here is Technically, you're merging multiple lists. You're not uh, adding an object, but you're adding a list with one object in it. And the list you're adding it to must be already existing. So you can start with an empty list and add something, but if the attribute does not exist, it will return in an error. Removing an entry from a list is very similar. So you use the update function and the update expression is remove from that list with that index position. The difficulty here is now knowing on which position in the list is the item you want to remove. To find out where in my list the item I want to remove is, I give every item an ID and the parameter I hand over to the function to, for deletion is the ID of that item. And then first I do a search for that item and I count basically, I loop through that list and identify the position on which this item is. And then I delete the item on that position. I've added the list with the name card to the content object in my database table and we'll now add entries and then remove them. This function gets a line item and of course a user ID and it will append to the list on content.card. 
this item. I have prepared a couple of test events. So it's like a shopping cart and I will append three items. So let's check how that looks like now. And now I have three items in my cart. Each of them has an ID. Now I want to delete one item with a specific ID. Here I have my function that finds the position of the item based on the ID, the del ID, and after that deletes or removes the item at that position. So in my test event, I remove the item with the ID Y. Let's check how that looks in the database. And now we still have Z and X, but Y has been removed. So these are some basic functions to use DynamoDB for your APIs. Of course, it can become more complex, but this is a solid starting point to implement the backend for your application.